is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There's no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 50. 1601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. security system guards your home with next-gen perimeter protection 24 7 monitoring and interior motion sensing and right now get a free Sloman shield security system and doorbell camera all professionally installed for free shield your world the Sloman shield with more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes Welton Rayum is committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. At Welton Rayum, they don't get paid unless you win. They handle complex personal injury claims caused by the fault of another in both state and federal courts. They handle auto, trucking, motorcycle, slip and fall, and bicycle accidents. Call 954-966-4646. That's 954-966-4646. Welton Rayom can help. Welcome to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. 
When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orvietosawards.com. Orvieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. Expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. Time to rock and roll. It's a Monday. I hope you're feeling half as good as I am. Although lesson learned overnight. Holy shit. Bitcoin just jumped to 68,245. We were screwing around 67,000, 665. Like 665, 67. It just jumped like bam. 68.2, 68.2, bitch. Woo! Feeling better now. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm just I'm just watching a climb here. That is just absolutely beautiful. Damn, let me see. Let's just, uh, let's just, uh, you know, what the hell, right? While we're while while we're on the show, let's just watch it go, right? I mean, that's kind of what it is. Just jump to sixty eight, see if there's something going on. You see that little, see the see the uh, arrow over here. Look at that, bam! It like said, "O's going on the air," or is it really the air anymore? But whatever. So let's uh, give it a little pump. Pump, pop, 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 pump it up, homeboy. So there you go. We are pa pa pumping it up. So I love it. Hope you all are doing well out there. You're doing a little better if you got some Bitcoin, that's for sure. Woo. Damn. I think we're going to push into the 70s today. I think so. It, it kind of looked like it was brewing on Sunday. Anyway. So I just hope you all took advantage of the dip because, you know, we've talked about this. They've handed you three 20, 20% dips and it's recovered and soared past it. This time was an 18% dip. Soared past it. Maybe you'll learn your lesson, you know, the next time if we get to 100,000 and then there's or 110,000 and then there's uh, a 15, 20% correction, you don't flinch. So. Anyway, but uh, what the hell, you know, uh, let's see. All right. I didn't know if it was about to go like completely parable. I mean, it, it just jumped like a thousand bucks like that, like 1,500, 1,400, just like that. Damn, that was good. That was good. Uh, anyway, uh, do want to, uh, by the way, I continue my whole uh, health um turn as uh those of you can tell with my face obviously i've lost a, a shit ton of weight i don't know how much it is but it's it's over 30 i hit the the six notch on my belt so now it's becoming like okay i gotta get another belt because there's like just too much slack left you know when it's all you know it's kind of like it's getting out of control 
But um, just uh, a couple things, uh, which I had a uh, an interesting night last night. Um, when you add fruits to your diet, you can drink less water. <laughs> You'll be visiting the bathroom a hell of a lot. And I can walk to the bathroom, which is really good, by the way. It's it's actually pretty cool. I'm walking now. Yesterday, I went to Whole Foods. I went to um, one of the, this Walmart supermarket that I have uh, close to my neighborhood because uh, I went to go look for a couple of things to include in my, in my lifestyle change, uh, obviously. And, um, and so... Um, one of the things that I've, I added over the weekend was I started adding fruits. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to remember fruits have a lot of juices in them. So, you know, you could drink less water. Cause I, I like drinking a lot. You guys catch me all the time with my, my jugs of, of Fiji. I, I drink water like it's going out of style all day. I've been doing that for the last couple of years. That's one thing that I've done well, even when, when I'm, when I'm extreme overweight. Um, but um, obviously I keep drinking a lot of water, but I, I realize now that I can kind of slow it down a little bit because I've included some other things, you know? So I added some fruits, I added, uh, uh, I added uh, what is it? Brazil nuts, pistachios, um, uh, walnuts, uh, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I am going all out, man all out okay i am going to change my ways completely and by the way one of the things because a buddy of mine i don't want to be a bad influence on anybody um and i and, and by the way i'm not a financial advisor and i'm not a health advisor either by the way okay i am not a guy a dietitian or anything like that make sure you check with your own doctors because i have to check with my doctors with everything i do um But I, I'm fasting, and I'm not only eating perfect in that four-hour window, okay? Because a buddy of mine started fasting. He's not up to the 20 hours. He's up to, like, 12 right now. Uh, and then he has his two meals in the other 12 hours. Uh, but he's, he's only eating really good. And he goes, man, but how long can you keep this up? And I go, you're not treating yourself to anything? And he goes, no. And I go, no, you have to treat yourself. So. I do cheat while I'm losing weight. I do cheat. Okay. So in that four hour window, if I feel like having a piece of chocolate cake, I will have it. You know what I'm saying? Am I going to have it every day? No, but you got to treat yourself. You know what I'm saying? You want to eat good overall? That's great. You know what I'm saying? My plan today is uh, I'm going to have actually a, a grilled chicken salad. My, my daughter's going to make me the, the chicken and then with spinach and all the other stuff and and have all that and 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 have a soup and i'm gonna have you know a bunch of water i'll have some fruits i'll have some nuts so today will be kind of a day where i'm gonna have some really good food all throughout but like yesterday i was at that uh what was it texas roadhouse and i i went and had a barbecue chicken i had some some their rice i had a couple pieces of bread with butter, you know, I cheated, dude. Um, I had a good meal, and I still am losing weight. Why? Because I then didn't eat for 20 hours. You know what I'm saying? So I go on my run, but please treat yourself. You know what? You have to. And if you want to, and if you want to change your lifestyle throughout the week, you gotta have a cheat day at least. You gotta. You you can you cannot be a good boy and good girl every single day of your life. No way, dude. You saw me at the fair, right? What what was what one of my meals was what? An elephant ear. So I tried to explain that to my buddy and I said, "Dude, you can't do that. You cannot. You cannot just drastically change your life. That you're going from cafecito y pastelito and you're going from fried food and you're going from, you know, this drive-through and that drive-through and then all of a sudden you're just going to start eating clean from day to night, bro. That's a shocker. That's a shocker." So just uh, a little tip for you all out there, you know, in the process, treat yourself. You, you cannot, there's no way, you know what I mean? And by the way, it's, 
if you read up enough, which I'm tr- I'm doing that now, I'm, I'm studying up as much as possible about this. You actually do need some fats and you need do need some carbs. You know, and your system needs some of that anyways. So it, you, there there's a certain level that you intake. You just the problem with those of us like myself that have huge weight issues is that we intake too much. <laughs> you know. So that's uh that's what it is. But anyway, feeling good and feeling even better that uh that Bitcoin uh pumped to 68 right now. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow! Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. Back now, now it's sixty-eight, four hundred, well, three eighty-five. Look at that! Look at that, bro! Four forty-four. Ow! Ow! Yeah! I says, I says, yeah! Oh man, four twenty. Spark it up. Light it up. Let's go. Now it's gone. Now it's back. Now it's gone. <laughs> oh, man, that is too It's too fun. It's too fun. It's too fun. Too fun, too easy. Ira Winderman will join us at 1030. Nice job by the heat bounce. Boy, last night, I should have lost money last night. Okay. I normally would have lost money when the heat took a monster lead. The live line was like plus 15 plus 17. And I'm like, the heat can't keep this up, dude. Like they'll win the game, but you know, they, their offense will die out. Right. Isn't this easy money? And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do it, but damn, I know I'm, I know I'm going to regret this. You know, I thought the game would end. The Heat win by like seven, six points, you know, something like that. And it was easy money. Yeah, bro, just take the Pelicans plus all that money, plus all all those points. Yeah, they're going to come back and make it at least somewhat of a game. It's basketball. There are runs, right? That's what I thought. And I should have lost money yesterday. I didn't bet, but I should have lost because I certainly wasn't going to go the other way. But uh, I should have lost money. I don't know why I did not go through with the bet. I have no idea that it was pure luck. Pure luck. Because I deserve to lose the money because I really wanted to do it yesterday. And I thought it was easy money. And I, I guess I guess it, it looked so easy that I said, no. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, it was nice to see him bounce back. So we'll have Ira Winderman joining us at 1130. Panthers also strong bounce back against the Flyers. They needed it badly after losing four in a row in the shootout on Saturday. Inter Miami was absolutely pathetic uh, on Saturday. That was a disgusting display of football. Um, obviously watching FAU go out in the tournament on Friday and then lose Dusty May on Saturday to Michigan. It was just like, you know, body blow, body blow, body blow. That's what that is. That was the Mike Tyson thing, right? Was it body blow, body blow, right? That's, that was one of the drops in it, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, it was just one of those where, you know, the only team we had in town that was in the, in the tournament. And they got bounced by Northwestern. They, brother, they fell apart. FAU fell apart like few teams I've seen in my lifetime. Like, it, it, it all of a sudden, the moment became too big for them, which is the weirdest thing out there. They couldn't make good shots. John L. Davis has been a stud for them, had like 4,000 turnovers in one game. Uh, uh, what's it called? The Martin kid had uh, the foul trouble. It was just turnovers, just bad offense. They were discombobulated. You know, they're, they're at, in hindsight now, after everything I know now, did those kids know he was gone to Michigan before that game? Was there something going on or something? Because I mean, like it like right doesn't that make more sense now 
right? Like, at least let's, like, insert that excuse in there, which is probably not true at all whatsoever. That we probably, you know, Dusty May probably and his agent were probably working on that behind the scenes and nobody knew about that shit. So I doubt that. But that's kind of like how they played. The way, the way it was, like, just, like, you know, boom, done. It was, like, the weirdest thing. Dude. Did you watch that at all, Sean? Did you watch uh, the FAU thing? You didn't watch it, no. So, it was it was heartbreaking. It was so heartbreaking, dude. Being and 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 you know you're like shit, dude. This program, you know, is on its way, and hopefully it can build on this. What do you got? No, I was gonna say I watched bits and pieces. I was watching on the app. Yeah. Yeah, I uh it was just man, I felt so bad for for the players, for the fans, for the alumni, the people that are there in every game, the people that have been watching this program grow. And uh and let me tell you something. Uh that FAU program has done a a phenomenal job of trying to find coaches. From Rex Walters and Green and Mike Jarvis. And I mean, they have tried all kinds of names. They have brought names to FAU. You know, and Dusty came there several years ago and just kind of built this thing up. Now, let's be honest now about the FAU situation and Dusty May. Okay. FAU has not proven yet that they have turned the corner, right? This is more considered an aberration what happened to them, a fluke, right? And if you're Dusty May and you're his agent, you're saying, hey, Dusty, you know, you've taken this as far as it can go. It can only get worse. It can't, it's hard for it to get better. Better is getting back to the Final Four. Better is getting back to an Elite Eight at least. Better is winning a national championship. How are you going to do that at FAU without the resources, the money, NIL? Here's Michigan. Money, resources, NIL. So, you know, if you're Dusty May and his agent, you have to look at each other and go, this is, we've maxed it out. We've maxed it out. You know what I'm saying? And now if you're FAU, you have to prove to people, no, you haven't. You haven't maxed this out. We have more to give. Now you've got to go back to the drawing board, but you've got to find a name because you've got a name now. So in order for you to move forward as a program, this is the interesting part. You can't get the under radar guy anymore. You do that, you kind of set your program back now. So you, if you are going to take that next step, you're now going to have to prove, oh, well, we lost Dusty May, but we're going to go out and steal somebody else's coach. Somebody else's good coach, because we're going to give them better resources than we even gave Dusty. So that's kind of the challenge for, for FAU now. You know, are they up for it? Can they do it? Do they have the alumni base? Do they have the support? Do they have the money behind it? Do they have the sponsorships? All those kind of things. Those are the answers that we don't know. I'm certainly not smart enough to know the ins and outs of the FAU basketball program and what they have money-wise. But that's the challenge that, that lies ahead for them now. Now they've got to figure it out this way now. But they're, they're in a fork in a road too. Okay? What do we want to be now? We've had the national spotlight. Do we want to maintain it or do we go back to our cubby hole and go get the under the radar coach and hope that we surprise you once again, some year down the line that, you know, it's, it's, it's what Bruce Sherman and the Marlins are doing now. Bruce Sherman and the Marlins that, you know, they tell, Oh, we want to do things to Tampa. Oh, you mean not spend any money and just hope that you're, that in the minors, you build up enough of a team that you can win. Yeah, no, that doesn't really work. You know, it, it, lightning can be caught in a bottle once in a blue moon. So if, if that's what you're going to do, FAU, you're going to wait for another Dusty May, another surprise, then we could be waiting for a long, long time. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's really up to them, you know, and you're going to have to spend now. You're now in the spotlight. Do you want to stay there? Okay. You got a guy that got you there. Now you're going to have to buy your way into this dance constantly, right? You walk into the strip club, you see the stripper you like, you want that one. Guess what? You're going to have to pay for that dance, right? She ain't going to dance for you for free. Well, FAU, you want to dance? Now you got to pay. Now you got to pay like you've never paid before. Now you got to make a commitment like you've never made before. Now you got to find NIL money like you've never had before. Because now you got you got the high. And how do you feed that high? Well, you need that drug. And that drug is national spotlight. You got to pay for that national spotlight. So we'll see what happens now with FAU. I hope um, I hope they can build on this because it's not easy. It's not going to be easy, and it's certainly not easy in the American Conference. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, let's see. Still living in the 80s time capsule is number one in the house. Happy Monday to you, Big O and Sean, Joseph, Steve Chapman, I see there. Uh, Miles Deep is in, in Las Vegas. Jamie Zoria out in San Jose, reminding everybody to hit that like button, baby. Ray Sosa is in. Oh, 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 oh. Ray Sosa is in, but you know what's also is in? 69,000! 69,000! 69,000. Look at that candle in the far right. Look at that delicious candle. Say I bought the dip. Say I bought the dip. Steven Gonzalez is in. Oh, the family had lots of fun at the fair. Thank you. There you go. It's always fun, bro. Always fun. Ray Varnick is in. Jay Gelfin in. Says the U.S. national team looked strong last night. I didn't watch the game. You know that? I got I to gotta see the replay. Uh, John Padilla in the house. Alex Palenzuela. Yeah, well, it was only a matter of time, bro. You know? It's only a matter of time. SoCal, hope you're doing better, my brother. Uh, one eyed Jack, it's a beautiful crypto morning. Yes, it is. SoCal says OBJ won't be a dolphin unless it's low hanging fruit. Yeah, no, that's that's um, it's what we told you guys. It's going to be a, a small salary deal, four, five, five and a half million, something like that, and then it's going to be full of incentives, you know, and that's what he's going to get. They're not. I keep, I, I had to explain this throughout the whole Dalvin Cook and the whole Jonathan Taylor thing. Oh, they're going to trade for John. No, bro, they're not going to give Jonathan Taylor picks and money. Yeah. Oh, is Indy going to take, you know, big salary back? Are you going to take Ogba? Are you going to take, you know, Cedric? Are you going to take, are you going to take a bunch of salary back? Oh yeah, then we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll give them the salary. We'll give you your, your, your draft pick. We'll give you a second, maybe a third. And we'll give him an, a decent salary because he's a hell of a player. But here, you've got to take this big player. Whatever it is. I don't give a shit. Doesn't matter who it was. Here, you got to take Xavier Howard. You got to take Christian Wilkins. You got to take Emmanuel Ogba and Cedric Wilson. That's, that's how the game was going to be played. It's just the media didn't have all the info. Some Most folks didn't have the info. But you had to take back a big ass salary. I kept go listen to the audio and the video. Go listen to it. It's all there. And this is the same shit. They want them, but they want them at their price. And, you know, SoCal listens to the show. It's a low hanging fruit. 
They're not going to give out a big ass salary. That's why t- I'm not a OBJ fan at all. Why the hell would I come out of left field telling you, hey, you know, it's a good option, OBJ? Just, you know, if you follow me, you know, you know, I'm not a, I'm not that guy. And so if, if it comes out of my mouth, you got to be like, like going, what's going on here, bro? What, what, what's he up to? You know, and you guys, you got to figure out sometimes. Uh, real Finn fan is here. He says missing South Florida, big time in Houston for business. Can't wait to get back to the palm trees, beautiful water and beautiful climate. God bless Florida. Be safe, brother. That's all that counts and enjoy yourself out there. Uh, Isais is in Gus Gus 1388. Lisa Rose uh, says hoping this freaking snow melts soon. <laughs> Vivinetti is in the house. Johnny D is in the house. 69,189. Okay. Uh, Brian Landis, Chad, Think Blue Dodgers, that's an O, Kyle Cockrell, uh, NorCal. Have a fantastic day. Great job, Big O. Thank you, sir. We're trying, my brother. We're trying. Cosa Nostra, Lucky Logman, Longman. Big O, I went to the Top Gun range and shot for the first time. It was so much fun. That is cool, dude. I am uh, I'm happy for you, bro. We're going to have a shooting contest uh, there, man. So that is, uh, I'm going to tell you, because now that I can walk, you know, uh, I'm not walking perfect. I uh, still walk, I uh, still walking a little bit, you know, gimpy. But uh, now I'm getting better. And by the time, by the end of, of, uh, of next month, um, I, my foot will be, you know, rock solid in the sense that I'll be able to stand and all that. I've missed concerts. It's killed me, by the way. It's killed me. I've missed these concerts. So we're going to have a shooting contest. So get ready uh, at Top Gun. Uh, let's see. Gordon Shumway, Jonathan Cago, Brian Landis. Uh, the more fruit you eat, the more you poop. Uh, well, again. Brother, I'm not eating like, you know, it's it's all moderation, <laughs> okay? I'm not sitting down and having like this gigantic bowl of fruit and all that. So, no, it's not making me, you know, so I'm, I'm fine, actually. So, it's actually, again, everything in moderation, okay? You know, I didn't have a whole chicken, you know? I had chicken breast. Okay. You know, you, you got to take it easy. <laughs> you got to take it easy. Anyway. Uh, Big O, do you know if OBJ still gets paid in Bitcoin? Like he did? I have no idea, my brother. I have no idea. When I jack bought the dip, Alex says, you know, I got the dip. There you go. He goes, I'm all in riding crypto to the moon. <laughs> I love it. I need more of a dip. Actually, Pipe Man Slim, I was hoping for more of a dip yesterday. Now, one, I have my, my, um, I, I did the experiment for you guys. Okay. Cause I wanted to show you that the last three dips were 20% and they all recovered and soared. And, and now this one was 18 actually. And remember how I showed you that three, ha- three, three cycles ago, the dips were in the, 40% range. The last uh bull run, the dips were in the 30% range. Now in this bull run, the dips are in the 20% range and the last one was 18%. And what have I been explaining to you that the dips are going to get smaller and smaller because institutional money is coming in. Institutional money does not move. They are the foundation of the stock market. Okay? It's the reason why Microsoft and Amazon and all these kind of stocks stay up there because the rich people have a shit ton of it and they got it a lot earlier and they hold on to it and they pass it on to generations because certain things, that's what you do with it. Okay. So the same shit is happening in Bitcoin. The institutional money is all coming in. And now the smart money, the rich money, the powerful money is coming in. So it's going to move less and less and less as it continues to grow. 
So the same thing. So the volatility becomes less and less and less because there's less retail, you and me. Working Joes sell as soon as they can get good profit. Rich people, they're rich already. This just enhances their richness. So there's that's that's where the cycle and the change is coming. And that's why you're seeing that the dips are less, but every time it responds. So, and that's what's happened in this bull run every single time. And that's why right now we're in the middle of, we were at 63, 62, right? And it jumped to 65, 66, 67 on Sunday. And here you go. Here you go this morning. We are now at 69, 224. Look at that freaking candle. And when we get to the 70s, we're going to start liquidating some of these shorts, which is now going to catapult it past 75. That's what's going on. So mark it down. I've told you every time there's a dip, free money, free money, free money, free money continues. Not a financial advisor, of course. Never have been, never will be. All right, let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's talk a little basketball with the one and only Ira Winderman in our Acura Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA report. Heat fans, time for the best insight of your favorite team with insider Ira Winderman, exclusively on the Big O Radio Show. It's the Acura of Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA report. Here's Ira Winderman. Right, all right, Ira. Your, your Bitcoin bag is growing also, right? I, I, I keep checking. I, I'm, just, I'm just riding the dips. <laughs> well, then you're doing really good. That's for damn sure. All right. Uh, we needed it yesterday like a shot in the arm, brother. I mean, you know, overall, I, I, I was laughing at that video that Ethan posted and you were asking the question about, you know, with the, with the Pelicans and Jimmy saying, well, we're, we're still a better team. and um, you know, up until that night, they were 19 and 20 in their last 39. After last night, you're 20 and 20 in your last 40. So it was really nice to see. But when are we crossing that threshold of not being the team that's 20 and 20? Because that's basically what you've been. You've been a 500 team for 40 games. And that's the thing. You know, so on one hand, you can look at yesterday's game against Cleveland and go, wow, this team has it in them. But that was the takeaway. So why don't you have it in them more often? Why does it take the debacle on Friday night against the Pelicans to get you motivated for something better? The regular season for the Miami Heat is what it is. Big O, we know it. We talk about it every week here in our Acura Pembroke Pines report. I just would like to see a better sense of them giving a crap about games that could make their lives easier. And, you know, Spo will turn it around. We love it the hard way when he gets in the play-in. This is who we are with the road less traveled, the tough road. No, that's a bunch of bull crap. Because you can catch lightning in a bottle once. But lightning is not going to strike twice in the same place. It's just not. And if you wind up getting the number eight seed, and look, I know Heat Nation, oh, we have Boss's number, we're in Jason Tatum's head. This is a great team this year. The Celtics this season look like the Warriors did at their prime, like the Cavaliers did at their prime. They are a great team for the ages with one of the greatest regular seasons of all time, and they're not going to go anywhere. So the the shocker with the Celtics is that Porzingis has stayed healthy, actually. That's really my – because that's kind of what I thought would happen to the Celtics, that you're counting on Porzingis. It's really hard. Like, I have a hard time relying on a guy that's been – his body has been so unreliable. That's what I thought. But it, you you knew that if he would stay healthy, dude, they have the talent. I mean, they, they should be a really good team. They have and the thing a- is, And Porzingis as a number three option is where he fits. With the Knicks, with the Mavericks, and to a degree with the Wizards, they wanted him to be more. They wanted him to be the number two to Don Chich in Dallas. That's not who he is. Now you got Tatum. Now you've got Jalen Brown, and now Porzingis can be that third guy. He doesn't have to, but can. So again, Big O, if he get in the play game, and they lose the first game like they did last year to the Hawks, even if they win the second one and go to Boston, there's way too many memories for Boston to slip up like Milwaukee did against the Heat in the first round. On the other hand, you look at a game last night, and you say to yourself, man, 
If we get the Cavaliers in the first round, good yeah. things can happen. That's a team they play very well against. That's a team that still could wind up number three. You get to number six, you're fine. So why crap games away like against the Pelicans, like not closing against the Embiidless Sixers. That's the frustrating thing about this team. And you know what? Eric Spolster works his ass off to get ready. I know what you think of him as one of the all-time greatest coaches. Bam out of bio for whatever you think or don't, you would agree Big O works his butt off, plays yes. hard all the time. But you know what? Going back to the Porzingis talk, that's Bam. He's the third guy. And He's that's fine. I mean, the way, in that Sixers game, Mm -hmm. You need somebody else to step up, right? He took 10 shots, and he shot, if I remember correctly, 8 of 10 in that game, which was a very high percentage, but it's like, that's why he's a 3, and he's not a 1 or a 2. No like, shots in the fourth quarter of that game. Totally yeah. agree with that. So yeah. my point my point being, it comes down to Jimmy Butler. Yes. And this whole thing of, I'm going to pace myself. I was talking about this in the press room yesterday. There's a very good chance that he'd wind up in the play-in, they'll wind up in the play-in by one game in the standings. One game that could have make a difference. Big O, I go back to the third game of the season when Jimmy Butler took the night off for rest in Minnesota in what was largely a close game in the third night of the season. You play with the basketball gods. You toy with them by taking time off, by saying, this game doesn't matter. I'm going to miss this game. I'm going to miss 20 games. I'm going to miss a quarter of the season. This is what happens, and you wind up punishing your teammates because injuries do come later in the season with Tyler, with Kevin Love, with Duncan through no fault of his own. We've all dealt with back pain. We know how debilitating that can be. But if you wind up getting yourself in a better position, you can live and absorb the injuries without the kind of fate that he'd have. This Jimmy Butler is a 75% of the time guy thing doesn't work in the NBA unless you're a super team and have three great players. 75? 75? 66%. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying. I'll, yeah. I'll go down to at least 60 because he doesn't show up for 20, 25% of the games. And then there's another like 15, 20% of the games that he, he's there, but he's, he walks through. Yeah. Then really he walks down. through the night yeah. and you wind up desperate and having it have. Yeah. Okay. So I, I have a, I have this theory now. Okay. This is new theory now with Jimmy. And here's my, he knows his body is practically cooked okay. and he no longer can be Jimmy badass for a ton of regular season games, okay. season games. And so now he's at a point where even if he wanted to, I don't think he can anymore. Ira, I think he has a certain amount of fumes left in that gas tank. And so I think he's pacing himself, not only because he's taking care of himself, but because I think that body we're, we're kind of getting to that point. So he's kind of saving as much as he can because he really, in the end, he couldn't go balls out even if he wanted to for the rest of the regular season and throughout a long stretch of the playoffs, as you know, as brutal as the playoffs can be. So I think Jimmy knows that that body of his is not, not what it was anymore. And not only does Jimmy know Big O, but the Heat know. And there's a reason they made the play for Damian Lillard. And there was the desperation and waiting to the last minute on the slim hope it would happen because they needed that alpha. And then before the trading deadline in January, when they realized where Jimmy stood, look, it's a risk giving up that future first round pick for Terry Rozier. But the Heat realized that, he, that, that Jimmy needed more in support. So here's the deal right now. You can be an alpha in the NBA, but if you're not an all-the-time alpha, it changes. And I'll give you an example. Tomorrow, the Golden State Warriors come to town. Steph great Curry example. is a great, great player. Klay Thompson was a great, great player. Done. But right now, last night in the game against Minnesota, Steve Kerr held out Steph Curry during part of crunch time because he knew his leading man was exhausted. Clay Thompson has been moved to reserve role so they can maximize what's left of him. This is the tough thing in the NBA. And the one thing I think the Heat have not been great at, although they tried it once, and I'll relate to that in a second, is when you realize that you need to move on or to change the dynamic. They did that with Dwayne Wade to much consternation in South Florida. And you know what, Big O? Look, Hassan Whiteside was the wrong choice for replacement leading man. We all know that. 
Yeah. But the thought process was not necessarily wrong that Dwayne had reached and maximized at that point that he was not going to be a leading man, nor was he when he came back from Chicago and the Cavaliers. You have to start to realize that also. And that's the hardest thing. We, you see, you know, like you see it in music when you see aging stars touring and you're like, yeah, what are anymore. you doing? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? They, this isn't them anymore. The Eagles, you know, who's who's left anymore? When Glenn Fry's not there, it's not the same group. You no. see it on TV shows. I, 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 I give up on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Larry David is so jump the shark. It's not funny. It's the same tired kind of trope. And in the NBA, when you realize you're getting past players' primes, you have to react ahead of the curve. I don't think the Heat have. I don't think the Warriors have. And that's why they're in the position they are going into tomorrow's game. So everybody's on the Orlando Owls, Gary Kemp. No more extensions for Jimmy, right? I mean, that's probably done with the Heat, right? That's not that. I mean, really, well, seriously. You know there, what, Big O? No I'm, okay, I'm not going to go no way for this reason. For the proper oh, amount. You know, Big O, Big O, stop for a second. Stop. Get your hand away from your eyes here. The oh. proper extension for a huge pay cut still could be workable. That's what happened with Dwayne Wade. With okay. Dwayne Wade, they realized he wasn't an alpha. Maybe he wasn't a beta, but you still had someone. If Jimmy Butler loves South Florida, loves okay. how he gets treated here, wants to spend his winters here, and is willing to go from $60 million to something considerably less, I'd be okay with that. Okay, if no, Jimmy no, no. Butler wants two years at the maximum and two years at $110 million, that, away. it's a negotiation. And if Jimmy's willing to pay back all that the Heat's done for him in helping him get to these NBA Finals or Eastern Conference Finals, I'm fine with that. Jimmy Butler can be a bridge for Bam, for Tyler, for Jaime, but he can't be the guy leading them into that next incarnation of the Heat. I think that's where they stand right now. So, again, will Jimmy Butler be with the Heat beyond the next two seasons? It's possible, but it has to be on the Heat's terms. Yeah, no, it has to be on the Heat's terms. And 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 talk about giving back, by the way, something that it, it's all hindsight now when you see it after it's all developed. But this marriage and the stage they gave Jimmy might have been what catapults him to the Hall of Fame. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I would agree with that. And I'll tell you another thing. He was a really good player leading up to his Heat career. But in his Heat career, he got the opportunity to lead a team to multiple finals, multiple conference finals. These are Hall of Fame resume filling type of things. You know, I'm not saying he's first ballot or anything like that. I'm just saying that if he ever makes it to the Hall, okay, I don't know if he does or doesn't, but if he does, he could thank the Heat. He could thank this opportunity in this stage that Miami gave him because it gave him the opportunity to be the best he could ever be, something he really never had in any other team. No, he let's, take, let's take it to another step. Let's take it not only to Hall of Fame, but to being a star. He's on every goddamn commercial when he turned the TV on between his, his Nickelodeon Ultra and his Hotels commercial, and, and, and now he's trying to sell us on, on Hulu TV. So the whole thing is so, you know what? It works together. Look, LeBron James, when he came here, was a star. Chris Bosh was trending that way, had the personality. Jimmy Butler, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Do you remember a single Jimmy Butler commercial no, or, no. Or, or theatrical appearance or television no. appearance before he got to the Heat? So it has worked together. So he now was, we see, he was just an all star before he got A nice player. A nice player who came up oh. short in Chicago, in Minnesota, in Philadelphia. So I agree with that. They can work with them. But to go back to your initial point, yeah. Jimmy Butler is an every night player is not there anymore. And it's made it really hard for the heat, especially with the injuries. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's the latest with Hakez? I, I, that's a one game thing where it's the same soreness that Kayla Martin played through ankle knee. Basically it's the tendonitis. He's been pushing himself too much. Why has been pushing himself too much? Because Tyler hero is going on like a month now without playing when you're without. Who? Who? What? Okay. Who's but that? that's, but that's the problem for Jimmy also is having to push yourself when the rest of your teammates aren't there. It is catching up to the heat. Missing Kevin Love and having to play Thomas Bryant in those minutes. It's all these little steps that wear down a team. So, again, be careful who you trust. You're saying don't trust Jimmy with an extension at age 38. 
Oh, but he not. trusted T Tyler Hero with his injuries with the four-year $120 million extension, and now they're getting burned that every night they have a $30 million player who's not out on the court. No, no, and not only that, he's untradeable. Literally untradeable. If you're it was tradable with the proper sweetener. Jordan yeah, Poole got that, traded that, from the Warriors. No, that's what I'm saying. He's untradeable because you literally have to give him away. But what I'm saying is, if you had a $30 million player that was desirable, because at the moment he's sidelined, okay, fine. But he's not a desirable player, so it just becomes a burden for the Heat because now they have to, like you said, add a sweetener to it. And this sucks. They have to go back to the drawing board to build them back up again to see if they can build the value back you up. To. You have to try to do that. You know, know what? It's like you were saying about your Bitcoin. You don't trade when it's low. You sell when it's high. And you've got you've got to wind up doing something there with Tyler. They need him back. They need him back now. They need him back at his best. And that's what you don't know. What are you going to get? How are you going to impact the rotation? Yeah. All right. What are you working on the Sentinel so folks can check you out, my friend? I mean, just tomorrow, the Golden State Warriors coming in, and this should be the absolute, you know, must-watch TV game. Instead, the Heat desperately trying to avoid the play-in. The Warriors just trying to get into the play-in. It's crazy how life comes at you so quickly. 2023 NBA Finals, Miami Heat. 2022 NBA Champions, the Golden State Warriors. Like Eric Spolster said after yesterday's game, this league will humble you. And these are two teams that are absolutely being humbled right now. So we keep an eye on that. And I hate to keep doing this every game, but it's the injury report. Does Duncan Robinson come back from his back injury? When does Tyler Hero show up? Kevin Love, how bad can a heel be that you can't give me 10 minutes a game right now? It's these little things that are adding a burden. Thankfully, well, Hayward Heights. We talked about this at the beginning of the year. Sure. That if you're going to play Kevin Love early on and a lot of minutes, you're putting a burden on that body. And so, because last year you got lucky. He didn't play much. And he was on the right. bench most of the time. You got a fresh old man that came to play with you. And so you were able to milk him for a while and, and, and you had no issues. But now you're actually using him like a rotational player. And we actually talked about this at the beginning of the year, that that's, that's the risky part. And look what's happened. Unfortunately, it's kind of caught up to him and it's not his fault. Ira, it's just wear and tear, man. Well, and it's what they thought they were getting from Thomas Bryant and what they did. Look, at the beginning of the year, they were talking Thomas Bryant and Josh Richardson and forget about Max Drews and Gabe Vincent. We've got two guys at the minimum with proven resumes. Josh obviously gets hurt, shoulder surgery done for the year. Thomas Bryant never hit the stride that Pat Riley himself said he thought he'd be the key offseason gain. So now you... I like him. I like it. Although I will say this. This was his best stretch of basketball. So Absolutely. Far. And I spoke to him about it. He's finally getting consistent minutes. So maybe something there happens if Kevin doesn't come back. At least he's active and energetic at a time when some of the team has been lethargic. So, yeah, that's an ongoing thing to keep an eye on out as well. I uh, I, I fall on the sword with Pat Riley on that one. I was I was all in on Thomas Bryan. As, I, as I, I thought they got a nice pickup of an active guy. He simply has not fit the system. Yeah. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heatbeat. Better yet, subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel so you can follow all of his coverage as always and the entire paper. Ira, thank you, sir. We will catch up next week, my friend. After I buy the dip. Thank you, Big O. You got it. There you go. No, it's, it's up now. Don't buy now. <laughs> Never stop buying Bitcoin is what I would say. Spring into performance sales event is going on right now at Craig Zinn's Acura Pembroke Pines, the new Integra 2024. $299 a month. You can get it 1.9% financing for 36 months. Also, the RDX. We should know we've had a couple of RDXs in our family. The 2024 right now, $419 a month. And again, 1.9% financing for 36 months. Spring into an MDX, $489 a month. And you can also take advantage of 1.9% financing. Go see Larry Schlossberg and Pat Nasso, Tony Stampone, and all the great people out there at Craig Zins. Acura of Pembroke Pines. You've been listening to the Acura of Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA Report with Ira Winderman. When you're looking for award-winning service and great deals from the number one volume Acura sales dealership in the Southeast United States, you go to Craig's in Acura of Pembroke Pines at 15601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. True fit banquets.
Uh, his name is Tyler Hubro. <laughs> Drew Finfan, thank you for the super chat. And remember, you can also make a donation through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show, which is Cash Big O Show. Ho Yoon, thank you for the love on Venmo. He says, have a great week. I appreciate you, Ho Yoon, as always, for the uh, incredible commitment to our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir, as always, for supporting us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Cash app or Venmo. And remember, you can make a Bitcoin donation. Now, if you make a Bitcoin donation, I then have to add it to my uh, uh, cash app tally that I'm doing for you guys. OK, so uh, I always tell you guys. Now, remember, it was up to seventy three thousand seven hundred. OK, we're, we're going to we're going to do this together because, you know, we still have those Bitcoin doubters out there, which I don't understand you people. But that's fine. That's all good. But I want to show you something just just to start off. Where are we at right now? We're at sixty nine thousand one hundred and eighty one. OK, I did a little experiment for you guys. OK, so I went and bought Bitcoin during this dip. Let me let me check let me let me read it for you okay folks I bought bitcoin at 70,000 147 so that's not in the green yet okay I bought it at 66,421 that's in the green uh 66,000 like every couple every half day every other day during this whole dip of the last week I would buy 65,000, 67, 7, 67, 6, 66, 3, 63, 8, 65, 5. And I'm going to explain why I did this on purpose. 65, 5. 64, 5, 64, and 62, 7, okay? All right, so I bought it in all throughout. After it hit 73, 7, uh, 73,700, I bought 15, 20 bucks here, there, here, there, every time, right? Just I wanted to show you guys because it's at 69,292. So obviously my average is lower than that right now. So my total investment to show you guys is 590.63. Okay. So I put nearly $600 for an experiment. Okay. And uh, I got to show you here. Okay. I, I hope you can see it. So I put 590 just here over the last week and a half, 590 bucks of Bitcoin. That's it. As high, because you people say, oh, it's, is it too late? I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if you can see this. Can you see the number? You can you read it, Sean? 62947. Did were you able to read it, Sean? So we put 590. It's already made just now, just here, right here. And I'm and all of it is not in the green yet. Wait till we hit 70,000. So then that one starts getting into the green, right? And we've already made $39. How many eggs will that buy you? Huh? Because I, I went to the supermarket. I saw it. It's between $250 and $450. Depends on what kind of eggs you want. I did that on purpose. I wanted to go, let me go see how much the eggs are. Right? So is your the dollar you have in the bank... 
three months from now, does it buy the same thing for a dollar? No, right? It might be a dollar ten, maybe a dollar eight, right? But yet my money just grew. And I can cash it all out right now and have $39 extra. And this is just not wait till it hits 737 and I'll show you the tally again. I'm going to keep it just like unless you guys send in Bitcoin and add to it, then I have to then adjust the number. That's about it. But I want to show you specifically that if you did it yourself, how the money grows like automatically. 39 bucks. You can you use because I'm a working stiff and you're a working stiff. Those 40 bucks paid for more than the seeds that I bought. Yes, I mean the the nuts that I bought yesterday. The Brazil nuts, the the uh the pistachios and the uh walnuts. I don't know. I think I might have wasted $16. Right there. You know, I I I, I try to explain it to you. And and so now, now I'm gonna watch you're gonna watch that 590 grow all by itself. Unless you, you know, somebody donates uh Bitcoin, which of course Cash App or Venmo, Cash Big O show. You know, those of you that have invested, you already know what the hell I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because your money has been growing like crazy. You're so in the freaking green, it's pathetic. But I just want to show you because imagine if you got into Bitcoin at 25 or 35 or 40, but then you got in all those other dips too. You're making stupid money. You're in a sick amount of profits because you continue to buy the dip. You know? So that I, I'm just trying to enlighten you to kind of walk i just made 39 dollars just by tell me is your 590 dollars in your savings account is it working for you like that is it working for you in your money market account 401k you ain't getting these kind of returns hells to the no and this is just scratching the surface it's gonna grow watch i'm gonna show you and this is kind of, that's why I, you know, looking out for you. Not a financial advisor, but looking out for you. Anyway, uh, Dolphins have an offer on OBJ. Maybe he signs today. Uh, Tony, you late to the game or something? We already talked about that. We already told you that they talked to him. They There's an offer on the table, but it, it, it's... It's on their terms, like always. You know, eventually the rest of, of the people maybe cover the beat will understand what I, I've been talking about for a while on low-hanging fruit. That, you know, people don't understand this front office, yet they tell you all the time what they're doing, and yet, you you know, you just got to read into it, and you'll see. Uh, Big O, do you know where I can buy? Uh, it's not out yet. It's not out yet, Jerry. You're on top of it. Stay on top of it. When it's out, you can buy it. And remember, uh, coin coinmarketcap.com, Jerry. All coins. Put it in there and then scroll about halfway and it'll show you where the, it's being sold on the on the on the decks or on uh exchanges. Okay. And crypto uh, Bitcoin is climbing as we speak. Right here, as we speak, it's climbing. <laughs> It's beautiful. Uh, let's see. Uh, Big O, your information on Bitcoin is priceless. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Ken Rosa. Bitcoin's going 150 to 200K at the end of this cycle. Even if you're buying at 70K, you're still buying at a discount. And, and, in, and if you're holding long term, Ken, and it's at a million dollars at 2030, what the fuck do you care if you bought it at 70 or 63 or 58? Or 82. Who gives a shit? It's a million bucks by 2030. Because there's only a finite supply. You will keep digging up more gold. You will keep digging up more silver. You will not find more Bitcoin. I, I know it's hard for people to wrap their minds around digital gold. But it's what it is. It's hard. 
It's, it's, it's an adjustment for all of us. Yes, sir. Uh, from Ian Rappaport, the NFL has banned the hip drop tackle. Source Boom. said the competition committee was unanimous on it. Hell yeah, unanimous, bitch. Hell yeah. Tyreek got injured on that shit. And he was never the same after that hip drop tackle with that ankle. No, man, that hip drop tackle, that's a lazy ass tackle. You're hooking and then you're dragging with your body. Screw you, dude. Hit him. Hit him. Wrap them up. Wrap up the legs. There's not enough of wrapping up the legs. There used to be more of that. Uh, let's see. I buy $50 a week. Marcellus, you're a fucking genius, dude. That's what you are, bro. That's what you are. And you'll be the genius. And your family members, your friends are going to be the ones that are going to go, dude, you were on it. Fuck, I regret. There's going to be a lot of regret. So much regret because you're going to watch our dollar crumble. You're going to watch our economy really like go through a rough one. And then the people that got into Bitcoin are the people that are going to end up thriving during those incredibly difficult times that are coming. And so, you know. Think about it. The most richest and most powerful people and smartest people in the world are buying it. That's all you need to know. Uh, jokes on jokes on you, Big O. I don't have any savings, a.k.a. I'm a working stiff. <laughs> Ty Crook says, saw Dylan Thursday in Asheville, and I swear at 82, he still sounds like he did when I listened to him back in the 60s. I mean, it's a sound that really, where is it going to go? It's not really a voice. It's a sound. You know? It's a sound. It's not Freddie Mercury trying to hold the, the pipes at 80 or Ann Wilson, you know? <laughs> it's not Pat Benatar hanging on, you know, and trying to carry that high octave, you know what I'm saying? No, dude. It's, it's a little different type of sound, you know? Gene Simmons will be able to sound really good at 80 also. Uh, Cap for Life says 70 grand i'm putting in five grand today bro uh it was at 15 now it's at 70 that's right oh did you see the clip of john bon jovi at the ultra festival in miami boy was it cringy you called it his voice is bad oh yeah no yeah you can't yeah he's done he's done i did not see it but yeah no he's done definitely done <laughs> that ultra and on Friday night with all the mud and everything going, that was a trip, dude. That was craziness, man. Craziness all over. Big O, what the NFL should tell us is what's the penalty for making a hip drop tackle? Well, no, there's – well, uh, that – that you know what? It's been banned, so you probably will get booted for doing something that's banned. It's not going to be a 15-yard penalty. So you probably will get ejected. Yeah. So, game-saving tackle in the Super Bowl. Only way you do it is hip drop. Do you do it? You got no choice, right? You can't let them score. And then even if they get to replay, well, then your guys get a second chance at stopping them. But you, you know, that's about the only, you know, like uh, I, I, the, the game is on the line, the championship, the conference, the, a playoff, you know, something like that, that you would try something illegal like that. But I'm sure it's all going to be burned into their heads. Hey, illegal. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, and last time I checked, Vontez Burfsett is is out of the league. So you're safe. Actually, you are. You're safe. You're good. You know? Can't complain. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, let's get to our 3A graphics sports calendar here. Starting off here, our number two of the program. And, of course, Alan Blanco, 786-618-1443, custom printing and embroidery. Uh, last night, the Pelican, I'm sorry, Friday, 
The Pelicans beat the Heat 111 to 88. The Heat got some revenge, not against the Pelicans, but against the Cavs as they were able to bounce back and split over the weekend, 121 to 84 over the Cavs. A nice blowout tomorrow. They'll take on Golden State. Panthers did the same thing. Saturday, they lost to the Rangers 4-3 in a shootout. Sunday, they beat the Flyers 4-1. That was awesome. Tarasenko, Verhage, Reinhardt, all with goals in the game. Montour had three assists. Stolarz had 32 saves. Uh, on the pitch, the Inter-Miami squad was absolutely pathetic, embarrassed by the New York Red Bull for nothing. It was a disgusting performance. I don't even know if I could call it a performance. Saturday, they will take on New York City at Chase Stadium. So NYC FC at Chase Stadium on Saturday. And then uh, Saturday, Friday, over the weekend, Northwestern lost to FAU 77-65, to getting eliminated by in, in the tournament and losing Dusty May as he leaves for Michigan. So there you go. That is your 3A Graphics Sports Calendar, custom printing and embroidery. Make sure you call my guy, Alan Blanco, 786-618-1443. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on in the world of sports? Um, Mike McDaniel met with the media today at the uh, NFL owners meetings. Let's go through a couple of silly ass subjects that make, you know, I get it. It's something for people to write about. It's something for you guys to talk about and all that. And uh, I know that uh, Dolphin Twitter can get kind of silly uh, like this weekend. You guys apparently don't get laid and really don't see a lot of breastuses in your lives. But anyway, um, first of all, he talked about, he expects Tua to be there for the OTAs and and that the contract and all that to get worked out. Um, for anybody to insinuate that there is going to be any kind of a holdout or that Tua is going to be, you know, uh, you know, holding out for money or not showing up or not practicing or, you know. I get it. You got to write something or you got to talk about something on a, on a radio station or on a podcast, or you got to write something in an article because you got to fill space. It's, it's the dead of the off season. Okay. There's really nothing going on. So all these stories, most of them are a bunch of bullshit. Okay. But you know, since the subject was broached on the, on the, on the press conference, I'm sure now they're going to start writing about it and it'll get some of you all to talk about it. But you know, what we do here is we douse it with like cold water and just, just kill it all off. Yeah, what, 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 no, the Jonathan, no, that's inaccurate. Uh, Dalvin cook. Yeah, no, that's inaccurate. No, no. OBJ. No, that's, that's all inaccurate. Well, we, you know, we keep you accurate on this stuff Flow, No, that's all inaccurate. We'll keep you accurate on all this stuff. Okay. While others don't. There'll be no holdouts. There'll be no play on fifth year option. There'll be a contract extension. And yes, it'll be in the 50 million range somewhere, 50, 55, whatever. It'll be the big time money. That's what they're going to give him. Whether you like it or not, that's what's going to end up happening. They're going to move forward. Okay. So drop it all, forget it, move on. Don't lose any more sleep. It's over. Okay. So if you don't believe in the guy, which is usually where it comes from, writers or fans, okay, because the writers that deep down inside never really believed in him are still the same writers, and they're still going to go back to try to save themselves, just like a lot of you, okay? So you can stop all of that. There'll be no holdout. There'll be no nothing. There'll be a contract. They'll work it out. They'll get it done. They'll move on. They're going to build around the guy, and he's not the problem anyways. So, sorry, certain media members and certain fans out there, you're wrong. Okay. And then uh, they also, he talked about gathering uh, still info on Tyreek's issues and that he has discussed it with him. There wasn't any real elaboration. You can't expect them to elaborate at all on this at this point in time when there's all kinds of things in play. So, whatever. Uh, McDaniel to call plays. He said he, at one point, he, he thought long and hard. Bullshit. Um, 
McDaniel is going to call plays. He's as stubborn as it gets. He's proven that already for two years in a row. Okay. Does he need, does he desperately need a game strategist? Oh yeah. Oh yes. He needs a game strategist. Yes. He needs one badly, but when it comes to calling plays, he can do it. He's just got to get better at it. And he's got to get better at managing the game because that's what's really setting his team back. Besides the injuries, it's Mike McDaniel and the way he handles a game day. Okay? So anybody that expected any kind of change, you're ridiculous. Okay? Even though maybe he does need help, he was never going to do it. You should have learned by now that Mike McDaniel is as stubborn as it gets. And uh, they made an offer uh, for for Odell. Well, yeah, of course. That's where the conversation came from. What do you think? They met and said, hi, we're the Dolphins. Hi, I'm Odell. I dye my hair blonde. Great. Nice to meet you. Have a fantastic life. No. Of course, they sat down. They talked numbers. They gave them the ballpark figure. Here's what we are offering. This is where we're at. Where are you guys at? Okay, we'll think about it. Boom, boom, boom. And it's over. That's how it always goes. Not sure if you have, I'm not sure if, you know, maybe we're breaking news to some people out there. But yeah, of course there's an offer out there. And it's a low-hanging fruit offer now, you know, based on incentives. They're not going crazy for him. So those are kind of the, the main talking points. Uh, for Mike McDaniel today at the NFL owners meetings. All right. But let's uh, let's stay realistic. Okay. Let's just stay realistic to what's really going on. Um, What's up with John L. Davis wasting those second that potentially could have been a game winner for FAU? He drove to the uh, basket and got in a foul. Brother, that, that team, you watched the game, Ray. The whole team was falling apart, bro. The whole team. It was just a disaster. And Giovanni's uh, also uh, caving in on the John, um, on the Bon Jovi voice. Yep. Bon Jovi is, as the young kids say, washed. Um... Let's see, Isaiah. I hope that roughing the passer becomes reviewable. Uh, Brandon says the issue most fans have his performance against good teams and late in games when playing from behind. Uh, you mean like last year when they were down by 21 against Baltimore? Or maybe it's because the whole team sucked. Because, you know, I, uh, you conveniently forget Detroit and Baltimore last year. That he brought him back. Right? But you only remember this year because you're not a Tua guy. So it can't be that the whole team sucked. It can't be that against Kansas City, Tyreek lost the game all by himself. Not the playoff game. The first one. Right? It can't be that. Of course not. No, Tyreek did. I mean, Tua didn't make the perfect throw to Tyreek at that moment. Not at all. He didn't put it right in his hands in a deep ball. But that's all right, Brandon. It's all right. Maybe you're just as senile as the Brandon we have in office. Maybe that's probably what it is. You know, you have your convenient point of view and how you want to look at it. You know, th didn't he come back against Baltimore two years ago also? Not only last year with McDaniel. Didn't he come back against Baltimore the year before when they benched Jabroni Brisket? But that's all right, Brandon. You have Biden's memory. I got you, my brother. Selective. It's all good. You know, when the team uh, wants to show up. But, Brandon, you're one of those idiots that think that the quarterback completely carries a team. You know, if that was the case, we would have won several titles with Marino. But guess what? We didn't win jack shit with Marino. Why? Because Marino never had enough help. But, hey, Brandon. You go ahead and you be you, bro. 
You be you, man. You be you. So, you know, it's, um, let's see, where's the, the consistency? Yeah, find the team. You know what? They don't win on the road. They don't win in winter. They don't win late. They haven't been doing that for 40 years, Brandon. I'm sorry, Biden or Brand is Biden or Brandon? Which one is it? I'm sorry. I'm getting confused. She's rubbing off on me. Jesus, this guy's rubbing off on me. <sighs> anyway, oh, flew up to Atlantic City this past weekend to see Yacht Rock Review at the Hard Rock. Great show, soft rock hits from the 70s and 80s. Have you heard of them? No, I haven't. I, 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 uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I have heard of them. I haven't, I haven't seen them. That's what it is. Okay. So yeah, I have never, I've never checked them out. Uh, Big O, if McDaniel has all the offensive plays called in advance and will not change, adapt during the game, even if the defense adapts to his play calling, is he stubborn as hell? Well, he doesn't have all. That's usually only the first set of plays that you, you, you map out. But uh, after that, you got to go with what's going on in the game. He's not very good. McDaniel sucks at adjusting. He doesn't adjust at halftime. Doesn't adjust enough. He hurts his own team, dude. He hurts his quarterback. He hurts his wide receiver. Overworks his receiver. Forces his quarterback to throw the one receiver all the time. It's not good. He gives up on the run when it's working. McDaniel has a shit ton to work on as a play caller, as a head coach. He's a very mediocre game day coach. He's one of the worst I've seen. And we've seen some pretty bad ones here. He's one of he's the best offensive mind we've had here in forever since maybe North Turner. But he's not organized. It's there. The the, the potential is just freaking. It's all there, dude. It's just a, it's spewing all over potential. McDaniel can be a hell of a coach. He's got the mind for it. He doesn't have the discipline. He doesn't have the understanding. He certainly sucks with his timing. Holy shit, he sucks with his timing. So, yeah, he's got to get better on game day. That's when his team will take that next step. Yeah. The coach is holding back the team more than the players way more than the players injuries and the coach get some luck with the injuries and maybe if mcdaniel can figure it out you can have a pretty damn good team not concerned about two i'm concerned about team health and mcdaniel's ability to manage the game and keep penalties low antonio ingram says chris broussard really hates tua and rob Tar rob parker praises tua Okay. I don't listen to Chris Broussard for football. You know, you want to listen to Stephen A for football? You go ahead. Next thing you're going to tell me, you're going to give me Woj's opinion on, on football also? You know, these people don't follow the sport. I don't trust them whatsoever. Most of you know more than... Stephen A. and Chris Broussard and certainly Woj. Okay? I mean, that's the truth. I am dead serious about that. Most of you know more than... you. Most of you forgot about football more than Stephen A. knows. Stephen A. doesn't follow it, dude. He fo if anything he follows, it's basketball. Outside of that, he's cashing big-ass checks. And then he's just clowning out everything else, half-assing it all, because that's what you can do in this world. So, you know, we got to kind of look at it for what it is. You know, trust the people that really are following things and understanding it. Uh, let's see. Chris Broussard is a basketball guy when he talks football, especially our fins. I yawn. Yeah, it's just, man. Yeah. Ocala Joe in the house. I bought a Trezor, but didn't know you can't use it on the iPhone. Bummer. No, yeah, no. That's why I told you the Trezor's more ex expensive. Get the, um, 
Get the Tangem wallet. You can use that on your phone. Okay? Get the Tangem wallet. All right? Do not put any of your 12 words on your treasure on emails, online, on a text, on your phone. Write it all down. Um, I have a listener that says he had some issues with his treasure. Now, I've had my treasure, and I've never had an issue. But um, he says he lost his stuff. Now, I don't know. Again, I don't know the person. But don't ever share your address. Don't go for those free airdrops. Don't on YouTube when you're on there and they're telling you, send us a, a thousand Ethereum. We'll send you back 3,000. Don't do stupid shit like that. Don't do any of that stuff. Do not put anything at risk online. Do not save your passwords online. Do not save your passwords in your email. Don't put it in your saved folder in your email. Okay? Do not do any of that. I gave you guys something the other day that I showed you that you can buy. Oh, it's over here. So there is what we call a, a, a ledger, but it's a steel ledger, and it's sealed, and it's fireproof, waterproof, all of that, and you can save all of your your uh passwords and it's called a crypto tag this is the logo a crypto tag okay so here's what it looks like and in it you will be able to save your passwords uh for anything that you have crypto bank account whatever and you can stash it in a safe, uh, anywhere, if there's a fire, flood, whatever, your passwords are always safe. Okay? So if you have an opportunity, get yourself a crypto tag. Okay? So just to kind of help you guys out, I'm always looking out for you guys. Anyway, there you go. All right. Uh, what happens when I die? Who will have access to my crypto wallet? Somebody you trust? Your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter? It's like a will. But you kind of give them access to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> John U. Smith just said hard knocks into the team's background, helping him make the decision. Yeah, I saw all that. That's old. Um, morning. Oh, you hear about that scumbag mom that left her toddler home alone for 10 days? Yeah, I know that, bro. It's um, It's pretty bad. Things are pretty bad, ladies and gentlemen. Things are pretty bad out there, bro. We got a lot of people that are bad. It's interesting um, getting back to a little sports and how I talk about environment a lot of times, that it helps players or hurts players. And I remember the first couple of years, you know, people like Biden, I mean, Brandon, um, they were, you know, a, a guy like that the first two years was blaming Tua. Who was I blaming? I said no, dude. Flo and his staff—they—they don't, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're not—they're not helping the kid. You're gonna fail. 
And I always, I always love to use the example of Steve Young. Now, some of you are too young for that, to know about Steve Young in Tampa before he went to San Francisco. Most of you are too young to even know what he did in San Francisco, unless you just know that he won a Super Bowl, but you never watched it or anything like that, because that was a while back also. But he looked terrible in Tampa because he had a bad environment. And that's what I said about two of the first two years there. And in come Mike McDaniel. And obviously he's looking better now because of Mike McDaniel. Not there yet, but McDaniel will get there. But it's better than what it was. So Steve Smith Sr., former NFL star, current NFL network analyst. It reminds me of this situation. He was asked about quarterback Bryce Young, which there's a lot of people down on Bryce Young right now. Well, guess what he said about Bryce Young? He said, at the end of the day, a smart kid can look dumb if he's around a lot of dumb people, Smith said. So he's not really blaming the kid. He's blaming the environment around him, which, by the way, the environment did suck. And so we'll see if a better environment helps him like it helped Tua, like it helped Steve Young, like it would help any quarterback pretty much, right? Kurt Warner didn't look good with the Giants. He looked great with the Rams and then looked shitty with the Giants and then all of a sudden went back to Arizona and got a coach that understood offense and, oh, my God, he went to the Super Bowl. What a concept. So he's toiling around in the arena league because he can't make it in the NFL. He was cut from the Packers. He was he was on a team that they had Aaron Brooks, Mark Brunel, and Brett Favre. And they cut him. And he went to the and he went to uh, the arena league. Played there and then they fished him out of the arena league and he played well. And then he goes to the Giants and he sucks. And then he goes to Arizona and he is revitalized. And that happens to a lot of players. And that's kind of what I talked about with Tua. And it was proven right. We'll see if this is what happens with Bryce. But there's a lot of people that are down. And they're blaming Bryce. when maybe they should be blaming that he didn't have the environment around him to succeed. just like Marino did not have the environment to win a championship ever, ever. And the closest he got was in the early 90s. Unfortunately, Buffalo was way better. Not better, way better. Way better. So, you know, environment changes everything for players. Uh, let's see. Uh, young looked amazing before Tampa. Yeah, exactly. Good. He looked great at BYU at the LA express in San Francisco, but not in Tampa. And what's the common denominator? Well, BYU was a hell of a program. The LA express was one of the best USFL teams and San Francisco was led by one of the greatest coaches of all time. Okay. And then you go to Tampa, which was a freaking joke. When he went to Tampa, Tampa was a total joke. BYU was never a joke at that time. You didn't want to play BYU in those days. Now we're talking Steve Young and McMahon and Robbie Bosco and what leads into Ty Detmer, right? Was that kind of the end of it? But there was a run for BYU if you follow college football. And if you follow the USFL, and if you follow the NFL, which I followed all of them, there's your common denominator. And there's a reason why Steve Young failed in Tampa and succeeded everywhere else. It wasn't it Steve Young's fault? It's Tampa's fault. Happens all the time. Steve Barkowski is a guy that 
nobody will give him the love he deserves. But do you know why? Because he was never in the environment that gave him the opportunity to really showcase how good Steve Barkowski was. Environment changes all. For your kids, for your pets, for your job, for an athlete, everything. Environment changes all. Okay? It changes all, and Bitcoin continues to soar. Sixty nine thousand five hundred and sixty six. Bitch. By the way, my the thirty nine dollars is up to forty two dollars now. Forty two dollars and forty three cents profit. Just by buying this dip, just buying a couple hundred dollars in this dip. Experiment. Live experiment for you all in the 60s. Can't make money? Bullshit. It's 42 bucks. How much more groceries can you buy with that? Bad. So just saying, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Welt and Rayom, folks. Got to tell you a little bit about Welt and Rayom. We love talking about Jeff Welt. Daniel, well, Jeff Welt right now is loving life because his his crypto bags are just overloaded. Daniel Rayom and, and Jeff Welt have been at this for a long time. Uh, they got these new offices now in Hollywood, 954-966-4646, bankruptcy, homeowner property damage, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury. Give them a ring, folks. And listen, this is a number you want to keep because we got hurricane season coming up in a couple of months. And then the rainy season starts. And if we get water, man, we had you might have water damage from this weekend. Condo, maybe your neighbor and the water ran into your home or your condo and it's, it's you know messing up your walls and all that. Call Welch and Rayon before you call the insurance companies. They have their own adjusters. Okay. They will protect you. And by the way, the new DeSantis laws, terrible, dude. They don't protect us. They're protecting more of the insurance companies. 954 966 46 46. Save it on that cell phone. 954 966 46 46. Welch and Rayon. let's see what we got here uh oh fish need to beef up their o-line and and d-line more the weaver guy hope he knows what he's doing well we, we will find out uh lenny is in even with the bad environment Tua was able to throw more tds and interception and had a winning record as a starter if that doesn't tell the Tua haters anything i don't know what will they there are it, it's like you know Certain things are going on in a certain world of politics. Um, certain people have made a commitment to something. And now that they're dead wrong, like about Tua and other things, uh, they have no choice now. They can't back out because it'd be embarrassing for them. So instead, they'll do the more embarrassing thing. Go all the way in and become even more of a loser. So that's kind of the way it goes. Um. Big old good thing those great Bills teams of the early 90s had that player, Mr. Wide Right, on their roster. Yeah. Yeah. Those creamsicle Bucks teams were absolute pushovers in the 80s, from what I can remember. Guaranteed victory pretty much every time. Yeah, it was, it was, it was bad, bro. It was bad. Big old Miami has to draft a premium tight end. No, nah, I don't think they will because Bowers won't be available at 21, and there's nobody worthy at 21. So Unless something freaky happens, then yeah. But Janu is going to be your number one guy, and he's uh, you know top three in speed. I if something I could see them adding another tight end by some craziness, but I think it's very slim to none that it happens. 
I think they're going to go, actually, uh, Shang Tushung is on it. I think those first two picks are going to be O and D line. I really do. I think that's what's going to end up happening. So um, I don't think it'll be a tight end. If they had a third or fourth, then maybe they could invest it. But for now, John, John will be fantastic. He's a fast guy, man. They can. That's going to be a pain in the ass for secondaries. Um, let's see. Oh, X Men trashing us in the way out, claiming flow regime. Uh, dude, don't fall for that. He needs a job. Flow didn't get to trade for the the guy from the Chiefs. So, X Men is just doing the politics. That's all. I don't expect somebody that needs a job to be talking shit about flow. That would be stupid on his part. That doesn't help him just to go to another team and deal with other coaches. Cause then they're going to say, well, this guy just talks shit about his coaches. So this is all, this is all psychology, bro. This is child psychology. Let's not fall for child psychology here. If anybody in the media is falling for the banana tailpipe or fans. Come on, dude. That's X-Men playing the politics. He's unemployed. He's practically done. He's no he's a shell of what he used to be. He's constantly injured. He's in no position to demand shit. Don't you see? A couple of rounds of free agency have gone by and he's sitting there doing nothing. He needs a job. I'm sure his agent told him love for all, no negativity. So it's no backhanded shot at the Dolphins. It's a player trying to save his ass and trying to get another check, dude. So he can pay for seven baby mamas or four or three, whatever he allegedly has. Shang Tu Shung. If you're falling for the banana in the tailpipe, man, come on. I'm probably late on this, but I was listening earlier. I put $30 a month right now for BC. That's the best my budget can do for now, but I hope even that is worth it. Hell yeah, it's worth it, dude. Yes, it's worth it. Just watch. Patience, stay strong, and when there are dips, your job is to buy more at a lower your price. That's kind of the trick. And then take advantage. Of course it's worth it. I'm not a financial advisor, but you'll see it's worth it, dude. I just I am doing the experiment now for you guys in the 60s. For the hell of it. Okay, and I put a pretty good amount for me, at least, you know, I'm a working stiff, but I wanted to show you guys. Okay, because I had some stuff saved for a rainy day. I was going to use those for altcoins. Okay, because I can get a little bit more if I put it in some other places like shrapnel or something like that, because shrapnel is about to blow up. But I said, you know what? I think it's important for me to literally show people a Bitcoin account. And put in a certain amount of money, tell them what that, that figure is, and show how it grows right from that figure. I just felt I, it, it's a responsibility, right? You know what I mean? I would never tell you to do something I wouldn't do, first of all. Okay? So that's, anybody that knows me, you know that that's how I, uh, how I roll. If I'm doing, if I tell you to do something or, I, hey, this is good, it's because I'm already doing it. Okay? That's why. And so I wanted I wanted to show you, but I could I saved that money for this dip, but I I was going to use it on altcoins. But I said, you know what? This will be cool for the show. The money will grow anyway. I'm not worried. So let me do it. Let's see what happens, and let me show. And so I bought it throughout. So there's no science. That's why I gave you the numbers and everything of where I bought it, at what point I bought it in. Because you can bounce around. You can't really nail the bottom or the top 
although I did pretty good in nailing some of the bottom. If you notice some, um, I got a lot of 63s and 64. I got 162, but I got 63s. I got 64s, you know, so it was actually pretty good. I got a bunch of those and then it shot up now. And where are we at now? Where's Bitcoin now? Boy, just continues, huh? Huh? 69.7? We'll be at 70,000 before the top of the hour. Before noon, we'll hit 70,000. That's what's going to end up happening. It's amazing. Uh, my $39, that was $42. It's now $43.49. From 39 to 43, 30, I added another dozen eggs. You know? So, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry to bring up figure skating, but as of yesterday, U.S. skater uh, Malanini is the new world champion. He's not only the first to ever do six quadruple jumps his score is the highest in history okay i congratulations to him i don't know what you want me to do with that doug you know i don't watch figure skating man i don't know anything about it i am a complete dummy when it comes to figure skating you know, I uh, end up knowing, you know, like the big names and once in a while and the Olympics roll around and, you know, something like that. But, yeah, no, I'm kind of uh, kind of lost at that. But it sounds like, uh, you know, six quadruple jumps. That's pretty freaking nasty. That person knows how to spin and land without getting dizzy. That's impressive. Justin Lemansky says, appreciate it. How do I make a Bitcoin donation to you? Ha ha. I was going to give you a dollar in the super chat, but realized that was way too ironic to do. Bitcoin donations are on Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show, Cash App or Venmo if you want to screw up my average. But it doesn't matter. It'll grow. It'll grow anyway. So I appreciate it immensely. Like I say, whenever you make a Bitcoin donation, it's a donation that will continue to give for years to come. And, and for that, I can't thank you more, man. I can't thank you more for that. So I appreciate it. So yes, you can make a Bitcoin donation. By the way, you, it's funny. All Bitcoin donations have been made on Cash App. You know, nobody's ever donated Bitcoin to the show on Venmo. It's crazy. Never gotten one dollar. Like you said, you were going to save it, send a dollar. I never got one dollar. Everyone uses Cash App, dude. The Venmo, they use it for cash. Okay. You guys have donated cash like crazy. Ho Yoon just donated. But, um, but the, the Bitcoin has only been sent on Cash App. That's the funny part. So all Bitcoin users, they're not on Venmo, they're on Cash App. It's interesting. You guys are just watching this number just grow like right in front of your eyes. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool live watching something this powerful grow like this. Because there's no asset in the world that does this at all. It's not even close. And nobody's made an Ethereum donation, by the way. Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That one no one's ever done on Cash App. There, that's a that's a newbie there. Nobody's ever made Ethereum donations. That's the other one. No one's made a Bitcoin donation on Venmo. No one's made a Ethereum donation on Cash App or Venmo. There you go. So that's kind of how it's broken down. By the way, since Bitcoin is flying, let's give you guys a little love everywhere else. Ethereum is up 5% to $35.80. Uh, Matic is up to $1.05. It's up 5%. 
Adam is up to $12.12, up 5%. Atlas is up 8%. It's at 82 thousandth of a penny. Illuvium is up 7.5% to $135. Gala, Gala Games, strong, man, 11.5%. It's almost at $0.07. Cents. Uh, HBAR is up 7%. It's up to 11.5 cents. Jasmine is up almost 5% to just over two pennies. And uh, Bitcoin is, you can, well, you can't see it. I took it down, but it's at 69,777. Solana kicking ass back up to $192. It was at 175. So that was a little dip for, for you that you can pick up easily 12% like that. Uh, when is the Olympic Committee going to combine boxing and figure skating into one sport? No, nah, that would be strong. My ex will have my crypto wallet. She deserves it, but I can't, I can't, let, it, can't let my wife know. Ah, you guys are a trip. <laughs> okay. Um, how can I get inspired for Marlins baseball? Can you guys help me? There are 10 and 12 on the spring. Um, it's It was an uninspiring offseason. There's no real commitment to winning. I, I like baseball, dude. I really enjoy baseball. So I'm just going to have to live through watching the Dodgers and the Yankees and the Astros and the teams like the Braves and the teams that actually try. Is that what I'm stuck with? Because I, I don't know how you get pumped for this season, to be quite honest. Really don't. It's crazy. All right. Um, you know, when uh, we have uh, games over the weekends or nightly, we try to find out who is the MVP, right? Who's, who's the person that is making a big time difference on the pitch, on the ice, on the field, on the hardwood? So we do that with our Cutter's Edge Pro MVP of the night. Who's last night's MVP? For your complete landscape solutions anywhere in South Florida, there's only one MVP. Cutter'sEdgePro.com. Here's our Cutter'sEdgePro.com MVP of the night. Got to go with the guy. It's a 50 goal score. And on uh, Saturday, uh, in a loss to the Rangers in a shootout, Sam Reinhardt had two goals and an assist. And then last night, he had a goal and an he had two goals and an assist uh, in the Panthers' four-one win over the Flyers, and obviously over the fifty-goal mark too at the same time. Second Panther in history to get over the fifty-goal mark, and Sam Reinhardt has been the best player on on the team this year by far bar, bar none this isn't up for discussion nothing we know kachuk is the stud and all that we know barkov is a stud but sam reinhardt has been the mvp of this team the best player of this team not just the most valuable but the best player on the ice night in and night out and guess what sam reinhardt is one of the best players in the nhl that's the other thing and thank the Lord we got an ownership group that is absolutely badass. And it's unlike what the Marlins do, where they allow their players to walk out the door. These guys don't do that. These guys are going to sign their best players. I expect Sam Reinhardt to get a nice contract. And I expect him to be here for a long time because that combination of Kachuk and Reinhardt and Barkov and the rest of these, I mean, it's just, it's a hell of a team overall. Bennett, I mean, there's just so many guys on this team, really good players overall. Um, so, and and the goaltending has been the best it's been. Bob has had a terrific season, and Stolarz has been an absolute stud. But Sam Reinhart is your MVP, and he's certainly our Cutter's Edge MVP of the night.
The MVP of the night is brought to you by CuttersEdgePro.com. Servicing HOAs, condominiums, townhomes, commercial properties, corporate parks, and malls throughout South Florida. CuttersEdgePro.com. Providing South Florida MVP performance every day of the year. Yes, they are. No doubt about that. Ah, Another bottle down. All right. Here's another one to go. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, Dolphins-wise. I'm humored by bullshit. You know, kind of like what happened with uh, with uh, Shang Tushung falling for the whole X thing and praising Flo because he needs a job and all that. Um You know, if um, if uh, if I could measure the amount of uh, bullshit I hear from agents, um, we could we could have bigger mountains of crap here in Florida than we have right now. Actually, okay, our mountains would be that much bigger. And again, look, it all sounds good. If you want to fall for the banana in the tailpipe and all that bullshit, uh, Drew Rosenhaus selling this bullshit that all his players, the four or five players that signed here, they all took less to come here. If you believe that, well, then, you know, I can see why you would fall for a lot of other things that go on in this world. You know what I'm saying? Right, so he so players are going to be taking less all the time, and he's going to take less commission. Really, I can see a player doing that. All of your guys, really. So there was a line for Jordan Poyer, and there was a line for Shaquille Barrett. Really, really, there were there were so many teams to choose from. So many teams on one year deals. So many teams on one year deals with. No tax states? I Some of the shit that is spewed out there, I get it. It's good PR for him. It ingratiates himself to some of you fans out there because you think somehow he's in your corner or some shit like that. And then it also, it's a PR move on him because it makes you want to like the player even more. Oh no, he came here he took he took less to come to us. No, it's not that maybe the other option was I don't know, Carolina. I don't know. What was the other option? What did you have, Jordan Poyer? Miami or Jacksonville, Miami, or what? The Patriots? You know, it's, it's just, it, it's just, this is, it, it, there's a, um, there's a song from the, the, it's yes, that's called us. Yes, the, the band is called the the and it's um, uh, okay, I know it's the Mind Bomb album, Greedy Hands of Politics, The Beaten Generation. That's it, The Beaten Generation, The Beaten Generation. And let me get the lyrics, because I kind of know the lyrics a little bit. Um, so uh, this is the part of of the line uh, of the, uh, here it goes. The beaten generation reared on a diet of prejudice and misinformation. The beaten generation, the beaten generation, open your eyes, open your imagination it's a great song by the way mind bomb is just a great album period from the the but we are the beaten generation 
because we are reared on a diet of prejudice and misinformation. I mean, it's it's a line. This is a song that was written in the 90s. And it just goes, or maybe late 80s, I'm not sure, maybe 89, 90, 91, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, so it just goes with everything that goes on nowadays, you know? And this is just more of the misinformation that they just want to throw out there. Kind of like what I've done with you with our dollar and Bitcoin and all that misinformation, you know? Same thing. Same thing. And here's Drew Rosenhaus feeding you a whole bunch of shit, dude. Oh, man. Too funny. I just laughing that, you know, I'm glad to have the players here. Just don't feed me the bullshit. I'm glad Jordan Poyer is here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like him anymore thinking that he took less bullshit. He wanted to play here, dude. He wanted to be here in Miami. He's been wanting to play. here. He has a house here. Took, took less, took less from what the Patriots were offering half a million more. Yeah. You're going to go there. Come on, dude. You know, it's, Uh, it's pretty much hope the Marlins to overachieve and expect the Dodgers, Yankees, Astros uh, uh, to be talked about nonstop. Yeah, exactly. Good morning, Big O. Captain Saki is checking in from Tarpon Springs. GP Traps says, thank the Lord. Yes, sir. Vinny Viola, Doug Sifu, man. Studs. Studs. Ocala Joe says, damn, Big O, you stirred up some bad memories of the 90s where Bruce Smith and Thomas were killing us. Yeah, those teams were brutal, dude. Those were some really awesome teams. I was just in Jacksonville over the weekend. Nice city and, uh, and no offense, but I'd much rather live in MI. Well, you you know, nothing wrong with Jacksonville, but you can't compare. You can't compare West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Jacksonville can't be compared to those cities, man. It's not even close. It's not even close. I'd rather live in um, in Port St. Lucie in Martin County. Love that area. But yeah, no, Jacksonville's a smaller, you know, while it's wide, there's a lot of land actually. Jacksonville is actually a big city in the in the sense of its landscape. But um yeah, resources, nightlife, all that kind of stuff. Bro, you can't compare nothing to South Florida. Tampa can't be compared to it, and Tampa's better than Jacksonville. You know, Orlando's better than Jacksonville, and neither one can be compared to South Florida. You know? Yeah, it's uh, South Florida's at another level, man. It's an international city. Yeah. Uh, I miss uh, the violent hits. And headhunting type of tackling back in the 90s and the players now are soft. They're not soft. It's just that the game is out to protect the players. And they're bigger, stronger, and faster than they've ever been. It's just more dangerous now to let them play like they used to play. You know, a lineman's 260. Now he's 300. It's different, man. It's a whole different. And he moves faster. And he's better. That's the scary part. They're bigger, stronger, and faster now. So if you let them play like they used to play, death will happen. John Rouse is in the house. Buddy of mine lost 20,000 XRP, had the keys on his phone for Ledger. Phone died, everything lost. Well, the phone doesn't have to. You can still go log on somewhere else if he has his keys. Oh, he had the keys on his phone. See, that's stupid. Yeah, no, yeah, I get you now. He had the keys saved on his phone. Oh, my God. That is dumb. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. Crypto tag. Crypto tag. Cryptotag.io. 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 Please. Okay. Uh, let's see. In 1950s, they were known as the Beatnik Nation. Later, they were known as the Hippies in the 60s. 
The owners voted for it, Shang, against the NFLPA's wishes. Dougie Fresh says, oh, I'm not embarrassed to mention the greatest figure skating performance ever. Tell me when I can offer my double Dutch jump rope insight. You got it. The double Dutch bus coming down the street. Moving kind of fast. You got to shuffle your feet. Get on the bus. Pay your fare and tell the driver that you're going to a double Dutch affair. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I'll be done. Here we come. It's a double Dutch bus. It's on. All right, I'm done. All right. Uh, let's see. Jordan Porter's model wife loves Miami. And as they say, happy wife, happy life. Yeah, you want to make that happy. Uh, shout out to Port St. Lucely. Damn right. Figo, what is a what is that secure wallet for BC you just showed us? That's not that's not a wallet. That's to save your keys, your passwords. Okay, Tangem wallet is the one that I would tell you to get. Get a Tangem wallet. Okay, and get the three cards. Tangem wallet with three cards. Don't get one card. You have to have backups. Three cards. Ninety nine dollars. Super cheap. Uh, let's see. Uh, remember to smash the like button, says Jay. Damn right. Patrick is out in Long Island. What's happening, Patrick? Big O, you like that they banned the hip drop? I love it. I love it. It's a lazy tackle, my friend. And so I love it. Uh, Tyreek got injured on that hip drop tackle, and it's bullshit. And uh, it hurt Tyreek. I'm not a fan of it, so I'm all for it. Uh, let's get to some birthdays today, ladies and gentlemen. Elton John today is 77 years old. Big Sean, the rapper, is 36. Uh, Aretha Franklin, rest in peace, born on this date in 42. We lost her in 2018. Sarah Jessica Parker is 59 years old today. Oh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Danica Patrick is 42. Kyle Lowry is 38, the waist. Catherine McPhee is 40. Uh, let's see. Smoke show. Um, uh, anybody else? Well, ending on Catherine McPhee is not a bad way to end things. It's actually a very good way to end things. My opinion, of course. So now we go to music history today. Oh, before I do music history, by the way, no one won the jackpot. Monday's Powerball jackpot now will be worth an estimated $800 million. Zero players matched all six numbers during the $758 million drawing. Monday's Powerball jackpot will be the sixth largest drawing in games history and 12th largest drawing in U.S. lottery history. The odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot are now reported to be one in $292.2 million. All right. Powerball jackpot. Ah, don't we don't need to go into all the all the uh, minutia of the whole thing. Play it. If you get rich, invite Sean and myself to a stake. OK, that's what I would say. Sean and myself to a stake. If you can do that, that would be um, that would be very, uh, very nice on your part. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's go with music history today. Why don't we? Since today is uh, March 25, what happened today in music history? In 67, Cream and the Who played their first ever U.S. gig as part of a rock extravaganza in New York City. By the way, I just read this morning, Pete Townsend said that he, ex he expects the Who to do one final tour. So for those of you... Now, one, one last chance to see the guys. You might have it. Uh, in 95, singer Eddie Vedder was rescued after being swept 250 feet offshore in New, in New Zealand. Eddie Vedder does some crazy shit. 
how he's still with us, it's a miracle, bro. How he didn't fall from the scaffolding and kill himself from doing all that shit all the time, it's it's amazing to me. He he should thank his lucky stars, as they say, because he's got more lives than a cat. Uh, well, now, second, Ozzy's number one, and he's next. In 2005, Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne had to flee their English mansion after a fire broke out after, as they slept. A smoke detector woke them up, and grabbing their pets, they ran out of the house. Again, Ozzy has really, Ozzy should have been dead 30 years ago, 40 years ago. In 89, it was Mike and the Mechanics at number one on the hits charts with The Living Years. Take these broken dreams. No, it's another one. Sorry. Uh, in 72, by the way, um, Paul Carrick, underrated. Underrated. Paul Carrick. Seriously. It's been all over the place. Squeeze, Mike and the Mechanics, Solo. Um, what's that band he had early on where he first had that hit? Um, oh, what's the name of that band? I mean, he is so underrated, Paul Carrick. He just is, dude. Just does it. Nobody ever talks about that guy. Super talent, bro. Anyway, in 72, America on this date had the number one song in America with a horse with no name. In 67, the Turtles started a three-week run on the singles charts with Happy Together. In uh, 2002, Soundgarden singer Chris Cornell walked out of rehearsals for a new project with members of Rage Against the Machine. He would later return, and the band would take the name Audio Slave. And that, my friends, is what happened today in music history. Okay? There you go. You know what? I'm going to look for it myself. Paul Carrick. Ace. Damn it. Ace, Squeeze, Mike and the Mechanics. Are you kidding me, bro? Obviously, his solo stuff, he's done some stuff. Well, with the Ringo stuff, yeah, whatever. I don't even know what Warm Dust is. He was in some band called Warm Dust before Ace. Okay. Ace is the song. How long has this been going on? That's Paul Carrick. He's a stud, bro. Just a stud. Stud. Seriously. That guy just gets... No, no kind of recognition because he's just kind of an under the radar guy and he's like been all over the place and you're like, well, that's him. Oh, that's him. That's him. Like, like, what the hell, dude? Like, who is this guy? Why, why, why hasn't he had even a bigger career? Uh, that Catherine McPhee is a smoke show and a half. God bless her. 74 year old husband, David Foster. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Uh, Big O, I like the Miami Heat, but they need to be more consistent. When the two games they uh, when they lose four games, they need to be more. Dude, they're twenty and twenty in forty games. This is who they are. They're twenty and twenty in the last forty games. They're a five hundred team. It's what they are, and it's what I've been telling you as of late. Right, Jimmy's done, bro. Jimmy's cooked. He only has so much left in the tank. He has to pace himself now. He cannot even go on a tear to help you in your standings. That's how shitty it's become now. You know, before it was kind of coasting and you don't show up. And so you end up in the bottom of the, of the playoff ringer because you have no stars. You have Jimmy. And if he doesn't play, there's no other stars on this team. And so now he can't even do that, ladies and gentlemen. He can't even do that. He can't. He'll give you some effort, but he he can't. He can't go out and, and go all out. Unfortunately for him. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you, Ocala Joe. 
Appreciate you, my man. A little love on Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show. Cash App or Venmo. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, Ocala Joe. Very nice of you, sir. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? You guys got any uh, any other questions? Because I don't know if I have. Oh, by the way, somebody asked me. You got me thinking. That was pretty good, too, by the way. Somebody asked me, will a Satoshi ever be equal to a dollar? And and so when you buy Bitcoin and you buy like a buck or $5 or $15, you're buying sats. That's what it is. You're stacking sats. Okay. Whatever you buy, you buy 50 bucks, it's sats. You buy $500, it's sats. Unless you're going to buy a whole Bitcoin. Okay. So, uh, and it depends on how many sats you're buying, right? So example, a hundred Satoshis are six cents, but as the value goes up, it's going to go up even more. And so somebody asked me, would a Satoshi be ever a dollar? And right now for a dollar, you'll get 1300 sats. Okay. You'll learn all this because this is going to become normal in your lives. All right. So the dollar will crumble. But the dollar may crumble before it is equal to one, one sat. That's what I was thinking about. Because think about it. A hundred of them is six cents. So to get to a dollar, it's going to, you know, Bitcoin's going to have to be at, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not that good at math. I need my, my wife here, my daughter for that. Cause they're the math geniuses. I'm the idiot. Uh, they're going to need. I don't know how many millions will Bitcoin have to be in in order for one sat to be equal to a dollar. But I'll tell you this, by the time it gets to that, our dollar has completely collapsed at that point. That's the sad part. If it gets to that. By the way, we're at 69,631. So we're now finding some kind of a, a home right now in that six in mid 69s right now. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. All right. What do we got here? Any questions? Anything going on? Happy birthday, Kyle. Oh, Kyle Lousy. Oh, yes. Happy birthday, Kyle Lousy. There you go. Happy birthday, Hoyt Axton. Who is Hoyt Axton? I'm, I'm missing it there, Rosendo. I, am, I apologize. It went over me. I don't know who Hoyt Axton is. Is that somebody of uh, historic note that I should know of? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Jimmy's like X-Men stick a fork and I'm done. Yeah, pretty much. Will the heat make an impact this year in the playoffs? I don't know. It's a great question. I have a hard time believing they're going to do the same thing they did last year with, you know, the way Jimmy is. And there's really no other star that will elevate themselves. You, you have role players that will, hopefully take turns and help Jimmy night in and night out. You know, that's kind of what you hope for. I don't know if it'll happen or not. It's a lot to ask. It really is. Oh, do you think that the betting problems that Otani is facing will lead to changes in online betting protocol? No, I don't think so at all. But it's up to players to have the discipline, you know, but they have to prove it. And I got to tell you, Dougie Fresh, I don't think nobody's, unless you get into his personal records, you know what I mean? If somebody can hack into that and then do it, but baseball is going to protect him. The Dodgers are going to protect him. We're never going to find out if he was truly illegally betting. You know? That's just, the, those are the facts, man. So I don't, I don't, we're just going to, um, guess from here on out because the rest of this is all prejudice and misinformation the beaten generation the beaten generation 
I'm just saying, open your eyes, open your imagination. I feel like hearing that song when I get off the air. Such a great song. Jimmy's window closed when Littered was traded to Milwaukee. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, the window's closed. You know, I mean, let's let's look in the mirror. Let's be honest with ourselves, okay? Did anybody ever imagine what happened the last four years could ever imagine it? You could never imagine it. You would have, if I told you five years ago, hey, for the next four years, they're going to add Jimmy Butler. And with Jimmy Butler and the rest of the guys, they're going to get to the finals a couple of times in the Eastern Conference finals three times. And they're going to get to a game seven and a game six. And you're going to tell me, dude, what are you smoking? What kind of drugs are you on? Those guys will be lucky to get out of the second round one time. They're going to win the Eastern Conference. <laughs> They're going to get to the finals. They're going to extend the finals. Now, get the hell out of here. You're full of shit. You would never believe me. Not in a thousand years. Because the brutal honesty is they have overachieved. Like, I, I don't remember... I don't remember another team at overachieving in a four-year stretch better than the Miami Heat in the last 30, 40 years in the NBA. One year, yeah, for sure. Denver, you know, surprising in the playoffs and, you know, whatever. What was it, Seattle or the Lakers or somebody or whatever? Um, the Knicks, they were kind of injured, and that's really why they were a later seed, and then they got to the finals. I've seen this shit for a year. I've never seen this for four years. I've never seen this for four years. I've never seen a coach. No one. I have never seen anybody get more out of less than Eric Spolstra has in the last four years with the Miami Heat. It is the greatest bunch of coaching that I have ever seen in a Miami Heat team. Better than all the titles. And if you're honest with yourselves, we are playing with house freaking money. Okay? House money. We really have, this is kind of the year that we should be like, the cold water should be doused. Let's be honest. This is the year that we should get doused with the cold water, the reality. And it's like, you know, as we say in Spanish, hasta cuando? Till when? How much more do you guys want to milk this? How much more miracle runs do you all want? Because you've had four of them already. You've had four more than Sacramento's ever had in their entire existence. You've had four more than the Charlotte Hornets have ever had for their entire existence. Think about that. Just let that marinate in there a little while. Okay? You've had four years that the Minnesota Timberwolves have never had in their entire existence. And you did it? with the front office's B game because they haven't had an A game in a while. The only one that brought the A game is Eric Spolstra. That's the A game. So if we're really honest with ourselves, we're playing with house money this year with the Heat. We've been playing with house money. We have no business going again to the Eastern Conference Finals or the Finals. Eric Spolstra has no business doing what he did the last four years, and yet he did it. So the only thing we can do is hope for another miracle again. But the reality, dig deep down inside in your gut, in your heart. Should you really make another run? Honestly, are you really worthy of it? 
No, you're not. So all we can do now is hang on to see how they end this, you know, season. Cause it's been very mediocre, very disappointing. And will they have another miracle turnaround in the playoffs? I have a hard time believing that. But then again, you would have gotten me every single time the last four years. So you'll get me again on this one because I don't expect much from the Heat this year. I just, I just can't. It's not fair. It's not realistic. Uh, do I think P. Rose ever gets into the hall? No, I don't. No remorse. So, you know. I get it. He deserves to be in a player, but the guy's been a king size asshole and he just doesn't get it. Never gotten it. Instead of brother, just be remorseful from the get go. We all screw up. There's nothing wrong. We're human beings. We have weaknesses. We have our weak moments. We have things that we regret. We do. We say everybody does it. If you live long enough, you're going to have regrets, dude. But it's remember what I just talked about earlier that in this world we have people that are all in on something and even though they're wrong now they're going to do whatever they can to stand on it you know and that's kind of what's going on and P Rose like he wanted to stand on that so guess what screw you bro too late too bad Get lost. You're not, you're just not. Pete Rose is not a good person. Let's just call it like it is, dude. The guy's not a good person. That's all. It's always been about him. You have those people in this world that they're just self-centered and everything's about them and the hell with the world. And it's all, and you know, it's going on in public right now. Anyway, you said it from the beginning, big O that when the heat signed Jimmy, they needed to sign another star. And Jimmy's last shot was with Dane. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great run better than I expected. Better than I'm sure Jimmy expected. Like I told uh, um, uh, Ira Winderman today, the Heat gave him a stage that might elevate him to the to the Hall of Fame. Without this stage, he doesn't get to the Hall of Fame if he's ever going to get there. But if the door is ever going to be open just a little bit for Jimmy, this is it now. With what he did the last four years by himself to help lift this team as far as he got, freaking awesome. But he needed that other star, and that was obvious. And that's where, unfortunately, that's why I say the front office has had its B game because you're still getting to the finals, Eastern Conference. You're still going to the playoffs. So Pat Riley still does an excellent job, but unfortunately, he has not done well lately in bringing in a whale. And that's because you need the player to help you. And that's the other thing that I, you know, that that was a, a bad sales point by some people that Jimmy can attract stars. No, he can't. No, he can't. That's a lie. He was never able to attract stars. We all know what Big O's karaoke song is. That's it. Double Dutch. You got me. You got me. And I could kind of do his voice too, right? Right? It's a fee, fi, fo, fum. Well, I'll be done. Here we come. So I'm pretty close. Since I can't sing, I got I can find somebody that has a sound. So and I just got to match the sound since I can't sing, but I can try to match a sound. Tiptoes through the tulips. See, there you go. I'm matching a sound. We're there. Not unloading Tyler Hero was XJ. Nobody wanted his ass. See? You're the unrealistic fan. They wanted to unload his ass. Nobody wanted him. So you're going to have to give him away. You're going to have to tag a first rounder with him. You can't do that, bro. You can't keep giving away picks. You're you, that's do not pick on the front. 
pick on them for drafting him. Pick on them for giving him a long-term contract if you want. Don't blame them for not being able to trade him. Who the hell wants Tyler Hero, bro? The only people that wanted Tyler Hero are some of the people on the beat that kept selling this bullshit about Tyler making excuses for them or, or the Heat themselves or some of you sucker fans that keep waiting for him to turn some corner that there's never happening. Like, bro, the bubble was four years ago. Enough already. Like, how many more times? So that's on you, dude. That's not on them. Blame CJ. Blame them for the extension. Okay? And now it's really turned out to be that it's really not a good draft pick anymore. Really, it's not. It's not. He's got talent, but he's got no toughness, no consistency, no availability. So no reliability. So you know what I mean? I disagree with you wholeheartedly. You're looking at it wrong. If anything, you can say, yeah, that didn't end up in hindsight now. Not a good draft pick and a terrible contract. That's how you got to view it. That's the way Tyler Hero is viewed. Not a good draft pick and a terrible contract. Okay? Not a bust because he's not a bust because he can play, but because he's not available and he's always injured, not a good draft pick. And the contract, oh, my God, the contract's a cancer. That's how you do it. Don't blame him for trading. You needed some stupid team, really stupid team, to want to give up anything. Just a second rounder to acquire that salary. You wouldn't even get a second rounder to acquire that salary. Because how do you get something and bring somebody on that's just absolutely unreliable? And that's what it should, should be on the back of his jersey is Tyler Unreliable. That should be the name on the back of his jersey. Not Hero, Unreliable. So look at it that way. Blame the team. Look at it and say, because at that moment we can't say it was a bad pick. We have to say in hindsight now, the draft pick ain't shit. Because you really don't. And, and then the contract is a joke. An absolute joke. By the way, be there. The fair, over 80 rides, 130 food stands, baby. General admission pricing, just $16. And it's running through April 7th. Fair opens daily at 4 p.m. Spring break and weekends at noon, folks. Check it out. All kinds of rides. And they've got the unlimited ride tickets. You can get them 40 bucks. We'll be there next Wednesday. Broadcasting live, baby. Be there, the fair. Oh, you just sounded like Tiny Tim. That was the idea, bro. You picked up on it. You picked up on Tiny Tim. See, I can do, I forgot the guy's name for Double Dutch, and I can do Tiny Tim. You got a recording contract? I'm signing. Let's go. Where is it at? I can do sound. Can't sing but I can do sound. So. Yeah, I can do the Bob Dylan stuff too because it's not a voice, it's a sound. So we'll do Bob Dylan. So I can do a best of, I'll do a Bob Dylan, Tiny Tim, and bro, what the hell's going on here? Let me, let me get the damn name here. Double Dutch. Frankie Smith. So I can do Frankie Smith, Tiny Tim, and Bob Dylan. So get me a recording contract. I'll do like three, four songs of each. And, and that's it. We'll make lots of money. There you go. You got the cash. I got the sound. Let's make lots of money. There you go. I can't do Pet Shop Boys. But it is an opportunity. 
Uh, the knee, the Heat needs to clean house this offseason and build with young talent. Uh, oh God, Pete De La Torre. This is this is Palacaya, isn't it? This is Palacaya. How many of you think that this is Eddie Palacaya, Pete De La Torre? Hey, eh? come on, come on, come on. The band Eddie Palacaya has returned with Pete De La Torre. So this is pretty soon Pete Palacaya, right? The Heat needs to clean house. It, it, they're called guaranteed contracts. You just can't clean house. Oh! I mean, seriously. <laughs> Come on, man. You guys got to, like, know what's going on before you comment. You just can't dump salaries, dude. In the NBA and Major League Baseball and hockey, it's very complicated because they're guaranteed. In football, you have some options sometimes. Depends on the signing bonus and when it was given and all that stuff. But, you know, you can sometimes cut a guy, take a hit, this, that. In basketball, that's not how it goes. Yeah, no, hey, uh, you get a player and you get a player and you get a player. No, no, that just does not you have to they have to want those players and then you have to make a trade and then maybe they don't want them for that price, and then you got to give a picks, and it's very complicated, Balakaye. There's no doubt that's him because the question already gave it away, you know, not very knowledgeable. So that kind of like gave, gave it away. Actually, you sound drunk more like Sammy Davis Jr. Nah, nah, nah. I, I did a pretty good Bob Dylan there. And Bob Dylan sounds drunk. So it's pretty good. Pretty accurate doing Bob Dylan. Yeah, Bob Dylan sounds drunk. It's kind of what it is. It's a really annoying voice. My buddy sings Dylan at karaoke. Asked him why. He says Dylan can't sing. I can't sing. Perfect match. He's right. Dylan can't sing. It's a sound. David Lee Roth can't sing. It's a sound. There, there are people that got away with a sound in music. They didn't really have a voice. They had a sound. There are people that have voices, lots of them, but they're actually people that actually have a sound. And this, there's not, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it sounds good. David Lee Roth could never really sing, but he had this bluesy type of scratchy sound that with the music, it was a marriage made in freaking heaven. You know, so we've had singers like that throughout the clash. You fucking think the clash can sing. It's a sound. Think the Ramones are singing. It's a sound. You know, but if you can master that sound, then your, 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 uh, your fan gets adjusted to it and it's music to them. Because Tchaikovsky might be music to some, boring to others, right? And death metal well, rah, 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 might be music to some, noise to like people like me. You know what I'm saying? But that's kind of the way it goes. So, you know, your buddy's right. Bob Dylan can't sing for shit, but he has a sound. It's not a singing voice, but it is a sound. That is distinctive and it goes with his music and the, his lyrics are the one thing I will never take away from Bob Dylan. He is a phenomenal lyricist. Okay. If you read his lyrics, you know, it's pretty freaking awesome shit. All right. But I am never, I've never been a Dylan guy myself, but it is a sound. Your buddy is a thousand percent right, Brett. And we have people like that in the history of music. That they got away with a sound. They didn't have a great voice. Um, interesting that Dion has come out and said that uh, that he will control. No, he did not say that he will control where he goes. He suggested 
that, okay, did you read? He suggested, here you go. I'll read it for you. So that way we'll get the right information out there and get it right so we don't put it out wrong. Okay. Because he was, I'm paraphrasing, but he basically made it sound like Shadur Sanders and um, and the other kid that they aren't for every city and that he'd like to see where he'd like to see them go is what he talked about. But not that he would control because in the end you can't control, right? Uh, but he did say that it would be like Eli Manning. He says, I know where I want them to go. So it's certain cities that ain't going to happen. It's going to be an Eli. That's not him controlling anything. That's just saying that, hey, be careful. If, you, if you're not the city he wants to go to, he's going to hold out like Eli did, like John Elway did. Okay? So that's what it is. This is why I like actually getting the right information out there for you guys instead of misinformation like that. He's not controlling. There were certain cities that fit, Atlanta fit, and I want that for my kids, all of them. I want the right fit. Atlanta was the first time I saw black people in positions of authority. It blew my mind. It was real in Atlanta. I had never seen anything like that in my life. Sanders also mentioned San Francisco, Dallas, Washington, and Baltimore as acceptable destinations. Uh, previously, he said he didn't want Shadur to play in a cold weather city. So he's actually, you know, changed that. Okay. But again, it's not, he can't control anything. And he didn't say that he was going to control it. He's just suggesting, hey, make sure you're a city he wants to be in because if not, he'll hold out. So that's kind of what it is. So let's, you know, let's, let's, let's get the information out the right way. You know, you might be repeating what someone else said, and then that's our problem. And we play telephone all the time. Uh, the reason that he couldn't close on a Lillard deal is that no one wanted hero. Nah, Lillard's a wussy. Please give me a break. Lillard could have forced this deal. He has no balls whatsoever. Uh, I blame Lillard completely on that. He's a complete coward. Uh, Rod Stewart, Kenny Rogers. No, those are voices. No, those aren't sounds. Ocala Joe. I don't know if you're saying that Rod Stewart has a voice. No, no, he has a voice. It's a scratchy voice, but it's a voice. And my God, Kenny Rogers definitely has a voice. Yes. No, no, those are voices. I wouldn't put those guys as sound. Spending my lunch break on my 43rd birthday with the best host and producing duo in the industry. Thank you, Eric. Happy birthday to you, my friend. That's awesome, man. Uber Beaner is in the house. Um, Tyson says, oh, describing music in every genre like Frank Ocean and Nod amongst folks in my time. But I always said he's not a singer, great writer and, and production, but acapella, yikes. Okay. I got um. I got to listen to the voice. I'm, I'm, I can't picture it in my mind right now. Good morning, Big O and Sean. Hope you all are doing good. Yes, we are, Stephen. Thank you. Philip Dunkley, Information and Entertainment. Thank you, sir. Brandon Roud, Big O, what are your top three at altcoins growth potential for the next year or two? Now, Brandon, I'm going to pick stuff that I'm invested in. Okay. All right, sure. Um, by the way, how's Ando doing? Which is one of them. I would have given you Ando, but it, it's it's blown up a little bit here. Let me see. Where's Ando at right now? Ando's at 96 cents. I gave it to you guys at 24. You're about to 3X the bitch. You're about to 3X the bitch. Ando's going to be a monster. It's still going to grow a lot, dude. It's going to grow so much, Ando. Um, and let me tell you something. Ando right now, it's got a $1.29 billion market cap. This thing can go, I still think it can go to 4 or 5x from here. Anyway, uh, let's see. From here.
I love H bar. Uh, H bar is at 11 and a half cents. I think H bar could brother get to 70, 80, 90 cents, maybe even a dollar. Uh, with everything it's got going on, H bar is going to be a monster. Chain link, I'm baffled. I'm baffled that it's only nineteen dollars and forty one cents. This mother effer is going to go well over a hundred dollars in this bull run. I am not a financial advisor by any stretch. Uh, Star Atlas is a game that I think is going to blow up. It's at eighty three thousandth of a penny. It was at twenty four cents. And it's at 83 thousandth of one penny. So it hasn't gotten to one penny. And it still needs to go to 24x to get back to its original, you know, all-time high. And it's going to surpass that in my eyes. I love um, Atlas. Again, not a uh, financial advisor. Remember, if you're looking for coins, go to coinmarketcap.com. Put in whatever coin you want. Scroll down about halfway. It'll show you where it's being sold if you're looking for it. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, Bitcoin, we are at 70,000. Seventy thousand, Ming. By the way, where are we at in profit right now? We are at uh, forty-eight dollars. How about that? Forty-eight bucks. I don't know if you can see it there. I mean, there you go, five ninety. And where's it at now? Six thirty-eight thirteen. How do you like that? Is that growing like that in your in your savings account? I doubt it. I doubt it very much. So, what else do we have here? Good morning. Oh, just got a new Dolphins hat from Canesware with uh, the old logo, of course. There you go. Did you use Big O10 to get 10% off? Remember, Big O10, 10% off. Big O10, 10% off at Canesware online or in person. And online, if you order over $100, you will get free shipping. Okay. You see this shit moving, bro? <laughs> It's already at 70,238. I mean, it just, it is, it was going to happen. We were going to bounce back and it was going to catapult. I told you, man. I told you, man. I don't lie to you. I tell you the tooth, man. The tooth is always there. Oh. God. All right. What else do we have? Uh, oh, agreed. I was uh, referring to that commercial. Oh, 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 I got you. I got you. Oh, are you going to a Marlins game this year? Probably not. I probably will not go to a Marlins game. Why should I? You don't make a commitment. Why? I'm not going as a media member, but um, as a um, paying customer, why? Why would I go? You're not committed to winning. If you're not committed to winning, how can I commit to you? Think about that. That makes no sense. All right. We uh, thank Ira Winderman as always. We thank Sean Stanley, the man, the myth, the legend that drives this program every single day. We thank all of you that called in, tuned in as always. We appreciate your support immensely. Um, if you sent in a super chat, thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, uh, Cash App or Venmo, you can make a donation anytime. Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That's Cash Big O Show. Cash App or Venmo. Appreciate all of you. We will see you tomorrow morning. Same time, same place, same bat channel. This is the Big O Show!